Hi, today we will see how Forisor can help identify and remediate a phishing attack. So a phishing attack starts um, typically with an email landing at a uh, target uh, mailbox with a um, very suspicious look. The user will then forward it to a phishing mailbox, which is then read by Forisor. So Forisor would fetch the um, phishing uh, email uh, to, for analysis and sends a notification for the user to say that this is uh, this message is being uh, analyzed. Now we go to the 40 source side where we see the alert has been generated when the message was uh, fetched and uh, we have a clear view of what the message is from the description so we have we know from from where the message came to whom i mean uh, all the recipients of this uh, message wh whether they were in the to field or in the cc field the attachment uh, the file attachment that was uh, with the message and a brief uh, mx toolbox summary about the domain sending this email uh, Forisor also can attach this um, MITRE attack technique uh, description and uh, mitigation to give a, um, a guideline for the analyst to, um, to better handle this uh, specific uh, case. We have the email uh, that was reported by the, uh, by the user. So what the, actually the user wrote uh, forwarding this email to, uh, to Forisor. And then the actual email, the actual malicious email, uh, you can see here the body, we can see the, uh, the header uh, of the email. Uh, actually, Fortisor reconstructs the email in its entirety. So we can see um, the whole uh, header fields to whom it was uh, forwarded, the, uh, the subject, the, um, the body of the email, the header of the email, etc. So all the email is being uh, reconstructed as, and, and stored as evidence uh, for, a later, for a later stage. At the same time, uh, all the uh, indicators uh, of uh, the email are automatically extracted and rated by threat intelligence that uh, Fortisor is configured to use. So we can see here that the uh, email, uh, the IP address where the email came from is actually malicious. So we can have a detail here of the uh, threat intelligence report. So we can see here we are using four different threat intelligence sources. So we're using VirusTotal, AlienVault, OpSWAT, or op uh, or uh, meta defender and api void and three out of five out of four are reporting a malicious uh, rating for this specific ip address we have even further details like uh, whose uh, whose uh, domain is whose blacklist is uh, blacklisting this uh, ip address the different uh, urls that were seen from virus total and uh, for example whether uh, from api void we can see that this is actually this ip is part of the tor uh, network uh, from IP stack, we, can, we have a who is uh, information, we have a geolocation, and even a map from Google uh, to locate the source of this uh, IP address. Uh, similarly, for a uh, uh, the URL, we can see that the URL is rated by five different uh, threat intelligence, uh, cyber threat intelligence sources. Um, in this case, so we have uh, virus total, Fortiguard, Alien Vault, Fish Tank, and API Void. And uh, similarly, we have um, details about threat intelligence details about this specific URL. Um, so, for example, we can see uh, where is it blacklisted, uh, whether it has a suspicious uh, URL pattern whether it's hosted by a free hosting service, uh, whether it has, which is quite interesting, whether it has a credit card field in the uh, when, when a user opens this uh, particular URL, which is even, uh, which confirms further the, uh, the quality or the um, reputation of, uh, of this specific URL. Um, all right, so we do the same thing for all the other artifacts. So for the domain, that's a similar thing. Uh, but most importantly, for the attached um, file as well. So as we can see here, the attached file had uh, two uh, different um, uh, reputation sources. The first one is virus total, and there was no reputation for the specific file for a simple reason that this file is a zero day. So it doesn't exist. Um, it's it's uh, 
metadata or its information doesn't exist anywhere on the internet yet. So that's why we sent it to uh, we sent the, the the file to uh, Forty Sandbox, which has analyzed, which detonated the uh, the PDF file and determined that this file is actually malicious. And we can see the history of all this activity right here in the uh, playbook log. So. Uh, this is uh, the playbook or the workflow which was responsible to take the uh, the file and submit it to uh, the local uh, Forty Sandbox instance um, that you see right here. And then we get the the uh, verdict from Forty Sandbox, and then based on the verdict, we update the um, the object. All right. So at this point, we are pretty sure that this is a malicious. Uh, this is a confirmed malicious uh, email. So an analyst at this point would typically start investigating uh, further the uh, the case. Um, the investigation for Isor in this case is done in a complete automated way. It, it could um, so basically lead into lead to uh, escalating, as you can see here, the incident into a tier two. Uh, alert, so basically an incident, uh, how we call it in, in Forisur. The escalation is a result of an automated uh, investigation that we can follow here uh, through the workflow responsible for, for this task. So we look for the alert uh, investigation and triage playbook, which starts by evaluating whether the um, uh, indicators uh, repetition is malicious. Uh, if it's not the case, the um, alert would have been uh, closed as a false positive to prevent um, uh, wasting time for, for the analyst working on the alert because there is no there would be no indication that this um, uh, alert is um, a genuine one. Um, otherwise, which is the, ca the current case, if uh, at least one of the uh, indicators is malicious, the playbook would send a notification to the reporter saying that the uh, reported uh, email is actually malicious. And then uh, the alert will be uh, escalated from tier one to tier two uh, analysts and uh, the alert at this point will be closed and the case management carries on as an incident within uh, the tier two uh, team. Um, at the same time the alert is closed, uh, we have an automated workflow which handles the incident response uh, which is triggered at the same time. We can see it here within the uh, phishing incident response uh, playbook. And basically what the playbook does is uh, to make sure the uh, incident has a malicious indicators. And if it's the case, it will block the email sender in the email gateway, and it will send a notification to the uh, user uh, stating that the email, uh, the malicious email will be deleted from the inbox. And then it will actually proceed and delete the uh, malicious email from all the inboxes of the recipients of that particular email. And we can see it uh, actually in the email client. So the inbox has the notification, which states that uh, the received or the reported, if you want, uh, email is actually malicious and it will be deleted from uh, the mailbox. And we can find it right here in the deleted items. At this point, the case management uh, carries on as an incident to which this alert has been uh, escalated. The incident has all the data that the alert has, and that includes the um, history of the comments, which indicates all the activities uh, that happened during the, uh, the alert uh, handling. And we can see here that the last action was basically to uh, delete the infected uh, or the malicious emails from the mailboxes of the recipients. In addition, the uh, incident module provides a graphical uh, correlation, which gives a uh, a very clear image of what the uh, incident is about. So we can clearly see uh, it's color coded. So we can clearly see the reputation of the different uh, indicators here. We have uh, uh, a URL, an IP, we have an email here, which are all uh, red, which indicates their, their bad reputation. And we have the uh, alert where uh, this incident was uh, escalated. That would help, of course, the tier two analyst to um, quickly uh, grasp uh, what is this incident about. And then we also have an alert, a, a task, uh, sorry, which was um, uh, created automatically to help the tier two analyst carry on the, um, the case management. 
The task has two required actions. So the first one is to scan the recipient's machine to make sure that none of them has opened the PDF file and uh, therefore infecting uh, their machines. And the second one is to educate the colleagues um, about uh, phishing attacks. And this is uh, basically through pointing them to an internal uh, training material that covers uh, this topic. Once completed, uh, the task can be uh, marked and the incident uh, as a whole can be documented and closed. So we would move uh, the phase obviously to an aftermath and the stages to resolved. The analyst has to provide a, an incident summary. In this case, it's a phishing uh, incident. And uh, what's the next step, which is usually documentation. And how did we resolve um, the incident? In this case, it was a automated remediation by deleting the um, malicious emails. All right. And by this, we would have closed the incident. Thank you for watching.